about to take a road trip and move across the country, but I wanted to do a drive through of my old neighborhood. And the reason is my neighborhood I grew up in is very highly cancer prevalent, if that's a way to put it. There's a lot of cancer in this neighborhood. So one of the reasons I don't share often that I want to move is because New Jersey seems to be cancer capital, cancer cluster. So this woman, a friend of ours, and our friend behind this home, um, both are surviving breast cancer. They're breast cancer survivors. This home is prostate cancer. He's doing well. This is my dad. Do you want to add anything? No. Why do you think there's so much cancer in this state? Um, it's the environment, the water. Um, a lot of super fun sights. The food that people eat. This home, 17 year old boy. He's doing great. Died from uh, pancreatic cancer. He died from pancreatic. We never knew those people. This young man, oh, he had brain cancer, a lot of struggles, and he died in his late 20s. This next home on the left, he has throat cancer. Did anything happen in this house? The man had cancer. He died years ago. This house, both. Both husband and wife, I believe they both died from cancer. Yes, lung and brain. Um, our friend over here, very sweet woman, she died of a very rare cancer. The wife in this house died from cancer. She was one of the first ones. First ones. I don't, I don't believe anybody here. Lucky ones. Currently, oh. she has liver problems. Right. I don't know whether it's cancer or not. And I lived in this neighborhood for 12 years. New Jersey's for 18 break for four and then 18 more. I've been here too long. This is the house I grew up in. Looks very overgrown. And my mom had it. What about this one? The wife died from cancer. What kind? I don't know. These seem to be no, okay. Nobody here that I know of. What about this street? Yeah. We don't know anybody. They built those homes after us. On the right hand side though. Oh, who, what about the right? How many people had cancer over there? Two that I know of. What, a woman and... Her husband. Now, the neighborhood behind ours, there are three or, f or four cases, but we don't really know these people. Um, Dad, isn't there another place in town that people say? There's another neighborhood in our town, Jefferson Township, Oak Ridge, the Milton side of town, that is very prevalent. What? One of these houses, this lady had cancer. Yeah. For a long time, right? Yeah, I believe he died from cancer. So we went through what? Is it a half mile radius? <laughs> like? Yeah, about a half mile. Insane. Um, and that's just one small section of town, let alone the state. I mean, the industrial capital, New Jersey, New York, right? Yep. Could that be part of it? Like, uh, in industries well, have been here longer? Uh, get all the air from Pennsylvania. What's wrong with that? They used to have a lot of uh, coal factories and stuff like that. They, they might still have it. We used to get all, all the pollution blows this way. Also, I wonder if I could put the camera on me. Also, when we buy homes here, we have to get radiation checks and radiation fans in the basements of the home. We do have basements here. And what is our land? Is it uranium? Not uranium. It's radon. But it's, it must be from uranium. Uranium, or, yeah. Or some, some type of thing in your Um And if you look it up, it's like the entire state is like red on that. So who knows what that does? And because we another, have we have wells. There's another neighborhood here that's pretty bad. Yeah, lots of stories about cancer in that neighborhood, and that's where like all my friends grew up. Um, so that's one reason why I'm getting out, and I'm going to share some footage of our journey out west, 36 hour trip, while I share uh, more about my story. Jefferson is really a nice town, even though it had the, has a heavy cancer. But the, all the trees and the greenness this time of the year is great. Why did you and mom choose to live here when I was six? We wanted to escape the state county taxes. <laughs> And Morris County was a lot better. 
plus we wanted to get a, your mother wanted a newer colonial size house. Yeah, she loved her colonial. That was her favorite house, actually. This is a big town. No, it's not. <laughs> it's 40 square miles. But there's only 40,000 people or 20,000 people? Yeah, well, yeah, 20, 20 22,000. There's a lot of sections, different sections of. A lot of lakes in the area overall. And we're gonna miss, you're gonna miss the uh, Italian food here too. <laughs> Definitely. You're gonna end up eating Mexican food all the time. <laughs> Nothing wrong with some guac. The old Mario's. Yep. Old bang. Ding dong. Ding dong. <laughs> So we live in the valley. This area is only residential, but a lot of New Jersey is just straight off highways. How do you say that? Urban areas. So we're, we're, this is the real. This is the woods, the suburbs of the woods. And then, if you go even further north, we're in the northwest tip. There are even more farms. Yeah, Sussex County. Yeah. Whenever somebody leaves town, everybody says, you're going to miss the seasons. But that's what planes are for. <laughs> and I think living in extreme ice, it's not, it's not a good choice. Why would anybody want to be stuck in their house? And more so, the skies are gray for like three months straight here. And then it rains all of April, right? Well, that's what you expect to have rain in April and May. Nope. Rain is probably one thing I'll miss. No, I'll miss but, the greens. But the winters are nice. I, I think the, the winters are nice with the blue skies and the sun beating down on you. Ice, snow, and wind, they'll get you in the winter time. But there's many nice days in the winter time when I walk outside, when I walk the dogs, and the sun was beating on us and it felt so good. So we ended up here because both sides of my family's ancestors came to, was it all Ellis Island? Yeah, they all came to Ellis Island. Yeah. And they all worked in Patterson at silk mills, what else? Great. Grandpa was a grave digger when he first came over. And then, then they worked in, uh, he was a, a fireman, like taking care of boilers in different, uh, different factories. And then my grandfather worked for the water company in Patterson. My dad was born in Patterson, my mom, me, but I never lived there. Um, my mom's father had a bar before he got into corporate. What else did our, what about the generation before that? Other factories? Yeah, it was mostly factories, silk factories, textile factories. So this is where the boats led the, them? The dye houses. Right, this is where the boats led them, and that's why they worked here. Like why Patterson? Well, uh, they had Wait. they had they had relatives that lived here also, and this is where the, this was the where the uh, jobs were. In Europe at that time, their economy was bad, so so everybody went to where to, where they can get a job. So our families, regarding my aunts and uncles and cousins, they branched out to different states, but some of us stayed around. I've lived 18 years in New Jersey, four years in North Carolina for college, and then I came back for another 18 years, ironically. Now I'm heading to Arizona. A lot of people assume you're going to get cancer anyway, it's genetic, but some cancers are under 10% caused by genetics. It is environmental, and that is not just air that we can't control, it is the fragrances in your home, the fabric sheets, the water we drink is huge. You know I recommend a pure water system, even if it's just countertop and not installed into your home. And nowadays, within the last, I don't even know, just a few years, you cannot not detox the body. Um, I, I think cycling in different detox things method is crucial to longevity and it wasn't like this even for two generations ago so detoxing needs to become part of our lives 
and where we get our food needs to be more important. It has to be quality meats. The plants, vegetables, and fruits lose nutrients by the time they get to us. I'm going to attempt to grow a garden where I'm going to live and eat. I'm going to attempt it because I want sustainable, organic food. Since I'm moving to a hot state, I have the fan. This is more for road trips to camping, hiking, things like that. But since we will be in the car for four days, I thought let me put it on there in case it gets super hot and there is a heat wave coming that is going to be a big adjustment for us. But I wanted to tell you a little bit more about my move. I sold my house three years ago in 2018 and this move is three years in the making. I thought I was set on moving to San Diego, but I no longer want to go there. So I'm trying some renew. I'm just renting to see if I like it or near my areas and life is short. So I've experienced the East Coast. Time to try the Southwest. Dad, what do you think about my choice of moving to Arizona? I know nothing about Arizona. It seems like a good choice, something to change your pace. I also know nothing about Arizona except all of the amazing nature sites that I want to visit. And that's why I got a big dog so he can join me. I got him booties. We're going to hope he lets me put them on him to protect his feet from the hot ground. Um, it's supposed to be 118 when we get there. Right now it's 88. We're in Pennsylvania. It's dry, but it's still going to be an adjustment. I mean, I work in air conditioning all day, so you know, if I'm moving in the summer and I can handle the summer, it'll be all good. But there's a pool, there's lakes, it's actually a lot more outdoorsy things than I thought. I thought it'd be hiking for sure, but there's actually paddle boarding, kayaking, and mountain biking is big, so I'm so excited. Since I want to bring my dog everywhere with me, I don't know how I will mountain bike, but I do. Have footage of me trying to teach him to ride next to my bike in North Carolina and he did well. Um, so three years in the making I can't believe both packing the four or five or six garage sales um, the tons of Facebook marketplace sales especially this past week I can't believe I moved I'm on my way um, Dad, do you remember three years ago, I was like, I'm gonna get a storage unit, and you're like, just move home until you find a place and bring all your stuff? Did you, yeah, re yeah. <laughs> Did you regret letting me fill your house with my stuff for three long years? No, oh, I, don't, I don't use all that space, so it's empty out now, most of it. Now yeah. I just gotta figure out what to do with the rest of the stuff there. Yeah, so some of the rooms are actually completely empty because I filled two pods and even though I'm going to an apartment, the second pod is mostly like a lot of my different business ventures in case I do want to pursue them again. And I put my kayak in there and some extra furniture pieces that I thought, you know, let me just take um, to have a couple of my favorites from my old lake house and my mom since we went up her hutches. But Dad, do you remember when I moved in? You're like, yes, live here, save money and pay off some credit card debt you have. Well, I told him it's gonna take three years. I remember I was crying. I was like, it's gonna take me three years to pay it off because when you keep paying minimums, it's mostly interest and you get nowhere. It's just a vicious hamster wheel cycle. So I had to put almost all of my money into just the credit cards to go way above the minimums. Um, so dad, it took me three years to pay off the three credit cards and I actually did it. <laughs> yeah. And I can't believe it. Don't it do it me. again. It makes me like cry because the three years are done. They're done. So now um, I have a new job where I can work remote. Even though I was working remote, they wanted you to be there. And if they ever called and were like, there's an inspection, there's an audit, you need to be in tomorrow. I wasn't going to be in the area and um, I'm going to be trying to keep a secret, which is not good. Um, so now I have a job doing very similar things where they want you remote. There is no office to check in on ever, quarterly, ever. There's an office, but not for my department to go into. So I'm very lucky that the timing worked out, that I got the remote position. I was able to get approved for an apartment. I've never lived in an apartment before. 
So even though I've rented, it was like from landlords and things. So um, the timing's just amazing. And I got the puppy in advance, which everybody thought was crazy, but there's no perfect time for anything in life. You know? Kids, anything, it's just there's never enough money, never enough time, but you just have to live life. And I got him in time to train him before I had to do elevator living, trying to potty train him. So I think it's ideal that I got him a little bit before I'm moving. Actually, on Sunday, I will have had him for three months. So, so he's along for the ride. I actually fit 14 house plants behind this seat. Everybody said you're never gonna fit all those plants. Um, you can see some of the leaves of the tallest one. Let's see if they survive the four days of heat and let's let the adventure begin. journey we have not shared much because it's been interesting the first day was supposed to be about 11 hours it was like 16 we got to bed at 3 a.m. same thing the second day and we hit so much construction on 80 right dad so much construction so many trucks I've never seen so many trucks in my life across the whole country so it was Jersey Pennsylvania Ohio Illinois you have to see this view though, let me tell you. And it was all trucks, all orange cones, one lane construction and rain. We hit Oklahoma gusts of wind. We hit a Midwest tropical storm that we were drenched in cold. The water was blowing under the hotel door. Right when we parked, we had to run our stuff in, run the puppy in, it was insane. And New Hampshire, we really enjoyed. New Hampshire? I mean, <laughs> New Mexico. So I'm trying to get this puppy who's uh, in the front seat with us for the National Park Tour. Um, New Mexico. New Mexico. <laughs> puppy, come here. And now we are in Arizona. We had really good Mexican food. We only had time for Old Town Albuquerque. Dad, what do you have to share? Oops, I've been zoomed in. Right now we're in Petrified National Forest and also uh, the Painted Desert. And I really don't want to stop here because I thought it was only a small thing. This thing is gigantic and we're traveling through it now, but it's beautiful. You've never seen landscape like this at, at all. It's like you're on, you know, on a different planet. So Dad and I did Yosemite about two years ago and we were out there for a wedding. And this is our second national park. Oh yeah, look in the distance. So I have booties on the puppy, which is why he's up here. He's, yep, he's taking them off, I took one off. This is because the asphalt temperature is, I think, what was it, 125 or 175? Because the temperature right now is 105 degrees. So to not burn his feet, we're gonna go on some trails here. I had to try these booties. Now the puppy's calmer and he's okay with his shoes. Dad, what do you have to share? It's a more petrified log. I don't know the history of this place, but we'll I'll have to look it up afterwards. So, about the last three days, how was the cross-country journey? Would you do it again? Cross-country journey is tough. You know, there's a lot, a lot of time in the car. If it wasn't for the trucks, 
in the, in the road construction, it, it would have been all right, but it's not smooth sailing. Two lane highways, the trucks just slow down both lanes. Not nine, tra not nine trucks for every car, probably. I, I never realized how many trucks there were out on these roads. What's, what's funny is we saw a guy taking a Thunderbird cross country, like, what is it, two in three days or all three days? Yeah, we ran into the guy, yeah. I had like a 62 or a 61 Thunderbird, and uh, we, we ran into him. He's cruising along, windows down. It's really I think he's probably taking the car to California. A lot but, of uh, people. But it, was, it was a really nice car. It sounded like he had a good engine in it and everything, but no air conditioning. So tell him about what happened with my move. How long has this been in the works? Since December. Since December. <laughs> Aaron's been moving since December. Talks to the people all the time. They confirmed that everything is going smooth. She can move in on June 14th, close and everything. But it didn't happen. So I got a phone call um, when we were halfway through Missouri. On the 11th, right? Yeah. Now, they did delay me once. I was supposed to move in March 15th and it got moved to June 14th. No problem, I had notice. But they told me that you can, the building's ready, but there's no permit for it. So new construction is a bad, could be a bad thing. We didn't plan on, we didn't think of that. I mean, they, and they kept updating her all the time, so that we didn't think there would be any, any problems. But. I checked before the pod got delivered. I said, is there any chance to delay? I only have the pod for 30 days. No problem. So then I called Wednesday, because we were leaving Thursday, and they were like, you're good to go. I got the welcome to your new complex email. Um, assign, you know, send over all your insurance and electric info to confirm you got it. Pay your first bill. Did it all. And we're about to go into Crystal Forest now. We're gonna actually hike this one, so I'll post some pictures. I make this stuff up. The pod guy came. We were back from Scottsdale. We're like, this is perfect. We were holding the spot with our car. He put this, he brought the second one that I don't really need first. So we're like, put it further away. We'll hold this spot. He's like, I'll be right there and back. Now there's a fire next to the pod facility and he can't get it. How did that happen in a 15 minute window? It's, it's crazy, but maybe he can still bring it. We're, I don't know if we're waiting to see or what. The car's like overheating.